Today's video is coming to you from the British Motor Museum at Gaydon in Warwickshire. Um, unfortunately, I've had to delete the intro of that video because it had copyright music in it. So um, here I am in Little Melvin um, redoing this intro for you. Uh, I should just warn you very quickly that this is a completely shambolic walk around of the show. I had very little storage on my phone. Um, I didn't have very much time. There were lots of people about and um, there was a big overflow section that I missed. So um, yeah, this is a completely shambolic look around, but it's just a quick look at some of what was there, um, some of the more interesting cars, or well, basically some of the cars that I noticed and wanted to speak about. Um, but first of all, the British Motor Museum is an absolutely fantastic museum. And if you haven't been before, I'd massively, massively encourage you to go. It is full of old, British Leyland prototypes and concepts and all that kind of stuff, along with the more accepted, um, you know, production cars that, that were made. So there's one of almost everything in there, plus some really, really interesting concepts and prototypes, most of which there isn't another one of in the world. The British Motor Museum is the only place in the world you can see most of these cars. So um, it's an absolutely fantastic place to go. I massively encourage you to go. Um, and places like this are struggling at the moment. With the virus this year, their income has, has you know, fallen off a cliff a little bit. So um, anything that can be done to support these museums is a brilliant thing. So please, please, please do go at some point. Um, anyway, I'll hand you over to myself, but yesterday, actually at the British Motor Museum. So we're going to start with the marinas and the towels. Uh, now, of course, everybody loves a marina and an Italian. I'm not going to be able to go into massive depth around this show um, just because there's so much stuff here and it would be hours and hours and hours worth of video. But I'll go over a few highlights, um, identify most of the models and tell you maybe something else that's interesting about them. But it's 40 years this year of the Morris Ital. We have a lovely red Ital over there on steelies with hubcaps, with centre caps, and that looks absolutely amazing. Um, I absolutely love that and it's got a light coloured interior as well which is just always better. So yeah, 40 years of the Morris Italia this year, um, which makes them even more of a classic car than they already were. But of course we have various marinas, Marina Coupe, they're awesome, Marina Saloon. Um, I really like the way marinas look, I just think they are a very good looking car. Designed of course by Roy Haynes, uh, the same guy who designed the Mark II Cortina. Um, so there's another claim to marina fame. Um, we have a very famous marina over here. This is Steph's from iDriver Classic. I'm sure many of you will be familiar with this particular marina, but again, I'm not gonna stand and look at all of them. Uh, but there is actually somewhere, well, there is this one here, which is a marina TC. So twin carburettors um, and about 95 horsepower, I think, in the TCs. It's a 1.8 litre B-series engine, um, of course. Uh, the same engine that was also used in cars like the MGB. Um, it's a fantastic bit of car and some really period 70s styling as well. And just behind the Italians and Marinas, we have the Mini Cooper Sport 500 Club. And now these are the last 500 Minis ever produced at Longbridge by MG Rover just after they were sold by BMW. So, again, we have more of them up here. So if we just take a little look at well, let's just say this X Reg car here. Again, they're all on slightly different registrations. So some are 51s, like these, just because it, you know, it took a while for them, for them all to be registered because they were minis in the last few years. Were quite expensive cars, um, and so, you know, it did take a little while for these cars to be sold. Not that they're unpopular. Um, they are fantastic. And you also notice that they all have a third brake light as well. That's just legislation caused that. Um, so yeah, they are all Cooper Sports, which means wide arch, 13 inch wheels, um, a little bit more uncomfortable maybe, but definitely more sporting. And this one has the wonderful um, metal look dashboard. Um, late minis had different steering wheels and awesome leather seats as well. And of course, spot lamps on the front. This building over here is the collection center, which is where the reserve collection from the British Motor Museum goes, and in my opinion, the most interesting building. Uh, partially because you can see all the cars being worked on down there. You probably can't on the video, uh, but upstairs are loads and loads of awesome prototypes 
and things like that. And so we have a good view actually here of the show because we're on top of the hill. And there's so many cars, uh, probably too many to look through. Um, but I'm going to go around um, individual collections of cars. So of course we have MGs variously around here. We have an MGF, MGB, another MGF, um, you know, all kinds of things. But I'm going to only go around individual clubs because it makes things a little bit easier. Um, so uh, apart from the Marinas and Itals and the Mini 500s, we have Metros. So uh, a couple of K-Series Metros, an MG Metro 1300 Mark II. And with the Metros, there are a lot of slightly shabbier cars that are still daily driven, used all the time by everyone and awesome because of it. Um, over here, actually, we have a little Metro ambulance there and, of course, a GTI. Um, we have, interestingly, I think this black one here. Yes, it is, actually, because I can tell by the square windscreen rubber here. This is a pre-production Metro. Now, a lot of the pre-production Metros were actually sold off as race cars. and They couldn't really be used on the road, especially as pre-production. They were... Um, yeah, this is a pre-production Metro. It's a race car. A lot of them became race cars. And because they became race cars, this one has done really well to survive. You see, it is on a W Reg. Um, you do see um, proper production Metros on W Regs as well, but this one is a pre-production, so it's extra special. You see, as an early Metro, it is badged as a mini Metro. Um, and next to it, we have a very different era of Metro race car, the Rover Metro Challenge cars from the early 90s, um, all in this awesome Dunlop Rover livery. And we also have, maybe even more interestingly, Metro 6R4 prototype, at least this is what I think this is. I've seen this a number of times on uh, Facebook, on the groups. But this is, as you can see, it's a Mark 1 Metro, so it's got a different grille, different interior. Uh, but it's a 6R4. Most 6R4s were um, Mark II Metros and I think a different engine as well. I think this one has a cut down Rover V8 um, to six cylinders rather than the all new V6 that was put in actual 6R4s. Um, before the MG Metro was introduced, we had this, the Metro 1.3S, uh, which wasn't around for very long and had some very, very jazzy seat trim. Look at that. Uh, which had 1.3 litre A series, um, but it just wasn't as sporting as, of course, the MG Metro that came later. Um, where can we find an early MG Metro? Oh, here we go. <laughs> an early MG Metro 1300. Uh, of course, much sportier pepper pot alloys are awesome. This one is a very early MG Metro because, again, you probably can't see that, but it has black trim on the seats. Another standard early Austin Metro um, and a more basic Austin Metro. Um, but I should probably get a move on because I've now been recording for far, far, far too long on just Metros and Marinas. But you see little Melvin there, and this is probably one of the best Metros here. This is uh, my friend Tom's Rio, which is just polished to infinity um, he he outdoes himself quite a lot um, and awesome GSI wheel trims as well which aren't original for the Rio but they're awesome of course we have little Melvin here um, not quite looking as good as he may maybe he could because I didn't really have much time to prepare for this show so uh, more metros once we get down this end there are a few more modified metros so this one has still a Rover K series but it is from a Caterham and this, it's making 217 horsepower, which is ridiculous for a Metro. It has coilovers at the front, but it's still running hydro gas at the back. Um, that's a real piece of kit. Um, right, where are we going to move to now? Uh, we have a few Ford Zephyrs and Ford Zodiacs. Um, lovely cars, but I'm not sure what they're doing here because British Leyland Day. There's Steph. Um, I won't say hello because she seems deep in conversation. Um, we have a few rally cars, again, not all British Leyland, but there's a lovely Audi Quattro over here, which I need to have a look at, and two 6R4s. Um, that one in particular is in an awesome livery. Of course, Audi Quattro, one of the best Group B cars. And then a Rally Mini, a Rally Healy, and a Rally Land Crab. Now, there are quite a lot of Rally Land Crabs because the shell was exceptionally rigid, and so a fantastic base to build a rally car. I'm very, very strong. Um, and so it's a good shout for building a rally car. Minis, Heelys, more Heelys, more Minis. 
Triumph 2000 rally car, that's awesome. Um, I love a Triumph 2000. Oh, again, I'm drawn towards Metro's, but look at that Metro race car, Metro touring car. Uh, Metro's did compete in touring cars in the early 1980s. And this, this, to the eagle-eyed, well, this is a Mark III Mini. And to the eagle-eyed, you'll be able to tell this is a Mark III Mini Cooper S. You can tell that by the bumper overriders on it. Obviously, the badge on the back says Cooper S. Um, and this one seems to have an eight-port head. Or is it an eight-port head? Yes, an eight-port head with throttle bodies. I bet that sounds amazing. I just, yeah, I mean, I knew this car was here anyway. Really shabby, looks very period. Um, looks just like a lot of minis did in the late 80s, I suppose. Um, or it is a little bit shabby, um, but I think that adds to the car. Holes in the bottom of the doors. Of course, a little British Leyland badge on the side for a Mark III Mini. And it's on mini lights, which are awesome. Uh, but I've only just seen under the bonnet, and that, that's going to make a hell of a noise. Uh, so yeah, that's probably my favourite car of the show, and it has a Leyland special tuning stick on the side of it. That's so shabby, and yet so amazing. Mark III Cooper S. We have then Henley Blue Maestro. Um, MGBs absolutely everywhere. It's all wonderful. That's quite an early one. Um, that is, is it, I can't remember what these were called. Yes, Jubilee Edition, MGB, so a little bit more special, of course. Um, chrome bumpers, rubber bumpers. I've covered that in an MG brochure video, if you're interested, go and click on that video now. Um, I'll put a link up in the corner. Um, Rover P6, they're wonderful cars. I'd really, really love one of them. A 6F4 that's been home built, apparently. Of course, it's on a J plate. Um, side repeaters, because they're a legal requirement by this point, but um, apparently, this one is completely home built with a different engine. I don't know, I don't even know how many cylinders, I've not really looked, but apparently this is home built and you can tell just by looking at the quality of all the work that's gone into this is absolutely exceptional. Um, so whoever built that, if you're watching, proper thumbs up to you, because that's amazing. Uh, we then get into the Rover 200s and 400s and instantly this very early um, Rover 200, flame red, Tempest Grey. Uh, these are lovely cars, these. I really, really love them. Um, obviously, the owner's around here, so I won't get in their way too, too much, but these early R8s are just wonderful. Love the way they look. They're fantastic cars. Of course, um, the platform is shared with the Honda Concerto, uh, a true 50-50 partnership between Honda and Rover, um, and generally a wonderful car. Here, we have, a, well, basically, a bit, a bit of a sleeper, really. This is a Rover 25 GTI, and the only way you can tell it's a GTI from the front is because of that black grille. Um, and you can tell there is a badge on the back that says GTI, but it's a bit Halfords maybe. But this has the 1.8 litre VVC engine, the same used in the MGF and cars like that. It's about 143 horsepower, I think. I'm not 100% sure. But yeah, the Rover 25 GTI, not a lot of people know that exists. Obviously, another hot hatch row 200 i'd like to talk about and um, the predecessor to the 25 gti is that the 200 vi uh, which is same engine same everything again it's a bit of a sleep it's not really doesn't stand out as a hot hatch but they these bubble rovers especially as a 200 three door white diamond like this one with those alloy wheels look absolutely wonderful so yeah 200 vi awesome little car um again little badge there um, it's one of the few ways to actually know whether it's a VI or not because they do look so close to um, the normal ones. Also, I think parking. Uh, cutting back a little bit to the R8s, my favourite R8 derivative, uh, which is the Tora. So the Estate R8, which was classed as a Rover 400. This is a top of the range 420 GSI with some aftermarket alloys. Um, and a bit more racy three-door Rover 200 here uh, with the optional sporting front bumper very cool oh look at that not quite in the show but a a little mini traveler um austin 7 there'll be a countryman then um with the wood on it that's just gorgeous absolutely love it um here we have some i just said was mentioning the 200 vi and the 25 gti um these are a little bit more in your face 
these are 200 BRMs, which are built as a tribute to, obviously, BRM with red leather, all in British racing green. Um, these are awesome cars. Um, and some Rover Coupes as well, uh, the Tomcat. And this particular one here is a Japanese spec Tomcat. So, um, again, two litre turbocharged, just under 200 brake horsepower. And they look awesome. I love these things. They are absolutely fantastic. But that one in particular, that NREG one, being Japanese spec is particularly special. We have a few Rover 75s, which of course I love, as you probably all know. There's a very early 200 over there. That's awesome. I might go and have a little look at that, actually. Little nose around it. Um, we have a little Cooper engineered Mini 1000. That's an awesome livery, that 60s livery on a 70s car. I love the Mark III Minis, actually. The Mark III is probably my favorite Mini. Um, of course, yep, early Rover 200 in a, probably the best colour with blue dashboard and blue interior as well. It's a 214 SLI, this one. Um, so 1.4 litre K-series. This was the first time the K-series engine was used in a, in a Rover. Um, and very successful it was. Yes, it's got the reputation of popping head gaskets, but that's not completely um, a lie. And it's also not completely the truth. There are lots of nuance, as per usual in the world. Well, this lovely little mini city, the most basic mini, um, early 80s single dial and of course I just get a bit of room the line down the side and the city decals that is awesome and on completely the other end of the range we have a mini ERA turbo so this was obviously with the big body kit on it uh, it's basically a metro turbo engine in a mini um, about 95 horsepower probably a bit too much for the car but they are awesome but two very very different ends of the scale when it comes to minis So of course, more minis. I'm just gonna have to walk past them, unfortunately, although there are some awesome ones. Rover SD1, that'll be a Vitesse. Yes, it is. It's got the thing down the side, like a very early Vitesse, the graphics. More minis. Rover 45 V6, that's Joseph Lloyd's. Um, that particular mini is awesome. I love the color of that. I think that's Harvest Gold, that color. Um, people have started thinning out slightly now. I'm leaving it a little bit too late in the day to record this, but more minis, that particular um, British Racing Green, late Mini Cooper is awesome. Um, but this is Felix. Um, Steve from the Mini Forum has built this brilliant turbocharged Cooper Sport, which is just ridiculous. Um, and that's his van that he's just bought as well, which is like particularly wonderful. And we get obviously auto jumbles all down here and wire edge minis. So these are becoming definitely a classic now. Um, there are a few of them here. Uh, so these are the very, very early modern minis. Uh, a few differences from later ones. But I love the interiors of the R50 Mini. Um, it's a fantastic, faithful look at, um, at the Mini, but retaining a lot of its character. Maybe not its practicality necessarily, but wonderful cars, the R50s, and those ones are very early. That one's an OBL, which means it's an original press car. Um, Maestros and Montegos, and this particular Montego looks like it'll be a 1.3. Yes, so 1.3 A series in a Montego. These are pretty rare, and that one looks very well used. Uh, Montego Estate with MG Cheese Greater Wheels. That's very cool. Um, gold Maestro, and loads of Rover 800s again. Uh, Rover 820 Turbo. Now that's one hell of a car. I'm sorry the video cut out there a little bit, but. Um, my iPhone is full, so um, sorry. But here are some Triumph Acclaims, the first of the Rover Honda partnership, which was a Honda Ballard with a Triumph badge. Uh, very good cars. Um, this is going to get more shambolic as we go on because I'm going to need to rush a little bit now um, to get it all in. Um, but we have some slightly older BMC stuff, and I want to find a couple of ADO 16s in particular just because I personally love them. And we see them all here the Freenas, there's an ADO 16. There's a lovely, that is a 1300, yes. That Morris 1300, these are awesome looking cars. Um, Pininfarina designed. Um, not Alec Izagonis. Is, Alec Izagonis obviously engineered the car, but designed by Pininfarina. Um, lovely things, love them. There's a little MG. And there's another MG as well. Right, I'm sorry, the camera did go off again because again, I'm full of storage, but um, I seem to have got rid of a bit now, so <laughs> I can carry on recording. There's a little MG1300. Again, they're just such nice cars. 
Um, it is starting to thin out here because I've left it far too late in the day to um, really look around properly. Well, to show you lot around it properly anyway. I'm not going into the museum because obviously there are lots of people in there, mask wearing, etc. And that, that's fair enough. But if you do want to visit, it's really worth going into. So come to the British Motor Museum. Rover 75 is very cool. And it's the first one I've seen here actually, a Maxi. Um, I love a Maxi. This is top of the range, 1750 HLS, a very late Maxi 1. Um, the Maxi is absolutely awesome. I love it. Um, after I'm just being licked to death by dogs. Um, Rover V8S. Again, SD1s are lovely. There's a Jag XJS. Um, Rover P6. Um, there are gonna, I haven't seen many Rover P6s here. Lots and lots of SD1s. Uh, including this one with gold wheels. Um, and a very period cool interior. Lovely velour seats. Um, there's a very late MGTF there. One of the late um, SAIC. Um, owned, built at Longbridge cars, as MGZS. Um, TR7 in yellow and a lovely little Morris Miner. There are some Morris Miners up there at the top actually. Uh, I've forgotten to go for them. Um, but yeah, uh, all you Morris Miner lovers, you just have to do with this here. But that's gorgeous Morris Miner. Love those cars. Um, land crabs. Uh, done a video on land crab, of course. Um, again, another Rover Vitesse, more Land Crabs, and an Allegro. Um, and a Maestro van, and that's a Ledbury built Maestro actually, because it's um, on a V plate. Uh, so it would have been built afterwards, um, basically hand built cars by, the, by that point, uh, which are wonderful. Um, I'm having to rush around, I'm not really going far over here because uh, there's music playing and I don't want to get done for copyright infringement. So I'm just kind of have to, gonna have to stay back and say Marina Coupe. Uh, very cool. More land crabs, more over SD ones, and of course, little metros. Um, and we're back over by Little Melvin now. So, so as we're back over by Little Melvin, um, that was my shambolic walk around of the 2020 BMC and Leyland Day uh, slash Mini and Metro Day. I'm going to come away from that music again because, you know, I don't want to get over there. But there is Melvin. Um, it's been a lovely day, um, the first car show of the year and most probably the only car show of the year as a Metro GTI comes past, how cool is that? Um, but yeah, probably the only car show of the year which is a massive shame, but circumstances. Um, so yeah, come and visit the British, British Motor Museum, I'm doing a little bit of a plug for them because they deserve it, it's awesome and they are putting on these events obviously. Uh, Metros have got in free this year because it's the Metro's 40th anniversary. Um, and the 30th anniversary of the Rover Metro, uh, like Melvin. So, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this shambolic walk around of the show, please click like, uh, please subscribe to Twin Cam as well. It really, really helps. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.